Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. Did Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu jump the gun by accusing Jagan Reddy's government of polluting the prasadam at the temple of Tirupati? The Supreme Court coming down quite heavily on the manner in which the TDP government in Andhra Pradesh made its findings public without adequate evidence in the eye of the court. That big political story is my top focus on the new strategy. After Naidu's Prasadam bombshell, Animal fat would have added. Alleging impure ghee in Tirupati laddu. Supreme Court flays Andhra Chief Minister. Angry Court says Naidu jumped the gun. Ladai over Laddu escalates. That is a big focus on news track. Days after Chandra Babu Naidu claimed that there was beef and pig fat in the ghee used to prepare Tirupati laddus, the Supreme Court flayed the Andhra CM. The top court declared that the gods should be kept away from politics and said Chandra Babu Naidu's statements on Prasadam were inappropriate and premature. Here's more. Unrelenting row over possible beef and pig fat in Tirupati Prasadam. Even the Garbette Prasada, Apavitran Jesse Vidanga, Posar Badir Sundi, Nasirakama and ingredients Segakunda, animal fat to go to Vadaran. Days after Andhra Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu claimed that the famous Ladus are adulterated, Supreme Court pulled him up for rushing to the press while the probe is underway. The apex court took dim view of the incident and said at least God should be kept away from politics. The top court asserted that the case is a matter of devotion for millions and not just another political battle to deal with. And what we are seeking in this matter, the first, there should be a committee, uh, a judicial committee headed by the retired judges of the Supreme Court and High Court. And second is uh, uh, regarding to the CBI investigation in this matter. So Supreme Court took the positive response in this matter and issued notice to the, all the respondents. Supreme Court also noted that Naidu spoke about the Rupati Laddus even before the FIR was filed or an SIT was constituted. Top court asked Solicitor General Tushar Mehta to seek instructions from the centre on whether an investigation by the central agency is required and posted the matter for further hearing on Thursday. Being a Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, one state, how can you make these big allegations without any inquiry, without any proof, without any base, baseless allegations? Clearly, Supreme Court asked it. So, that Definitely, on third we will definitely know. On Monday, the SIT also began its probe and visited warehouses and rest houses to check how the adulteration took place inside the Tirupati temple. Andhra Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu had cited lab reports to claim the act of sacrilege at the revered shrine and said that under Earth's wild Jagan government, ghee used for ladus were adulterated with beef and pork fat. Special investigation team that has arrived here in Tirupati has been here conducting meetings and inspections in across various locations, checking the quality of uh, the flour mill, the rice mill or even the milk and ghee tankers which arrive here as per the tender supplied and issued after clearances from the DTD board. At Tirumala, with video journalist Prasad, Apoor Bajaj Chandran, India Today. The Supreme Court coming down hard on the TDP government in Andhra Pradesh. So did Chandra Babu Naidu jump the gun? The judges seem quite displeased. They're saying keep politics away from religion. Joining me on this uh, news track broadcast, we've got Deepak Reddy Ganpati, TDP national spokesperson. Shilpa Ravi Chandra Kishore Reddy is a leader of the YSRCP. 
Uh, we've got Raghav Avasti, an advocate, and we've got Ovi Ramana. He's been a member of the Tirupati board. So thank you to all our guests. I want to go across to Deepak Reddy Ganpati first. Um, both the judges asking in very stern words, what was the need to go public? Keep the gods away from politics. Where is the evidence? If an SIT probe has been ordered, why not wait for the investigation? The sum and substance of the court proceedings, uh, Mr. Ganpati, is that your chief minister and your government seems to be doing politics at the expense of religion, wanting to score political points to try and pin your opponents down. Good evening, uh, Rahul. Let me uh, tell you uh, what exactly has happened and why this whole uh, issue, I mean, as in, in context with the Supreme Court uh, observations today. If you see, uh, Chandra Babu Naiduji had a meeting with all our MLAs and ministers some time ago. So that was a, a meeting specifically for our uh, elected representatives. And in that particular meeting, he made a remark that said that, you know, news came to me that uh, Lord Venkateshwara's uh, he was also adulterated. And uh, Chandra Babu Naiduji is a very strong believer of uh, Lord Venkateshwara. And he's told on an n number of occasions that after the uh, Naxalite attack on him, his life, uh, he owes it to Lord Venkateshwara. Only because of him, he survived that day. So that is the uh, respect and that is the... the, the Mr. Ganpati, please the answer Lord. my question. And that's the court question as I'm well. What I'm is the to, evidence I'm, I'm, I'm that you have that. at hand when a probe has been ordered, the results of the probe are not before you? Where is the evidence to say that beef fat was used inside the Tirupati Laddus? Yeah, you, you actually cut me off. I'm coming to that particular fact. Only. So what has happened when that comment was made, he made that comment with great pain. But that particular comment became viral and national media has taken it up in a very serious manner. And that's when even we kind of woke up in uh, TDP and we went and asked uh, what, you know, what exactly has happened. And it took us a day for getting this test report out also. So uh, Chandra Babu Naiduji put a special team to rectify the whole situation. He didn't want to alarm the situation only because the national media has really picked it up and, you know, uh, and wanted the facts. We actually put out those test reports. But the intention of the government was that a detailed investigation would be done and all the facts would be put in front of the people. Even before that, the team, that expert team which was put, took all the corrective steps immediately. But because it is such a sensitive issue for Hindus and this part information had to come out, only because national media was continuously, you know, harping on it. And, and then we came out with that test report. So this is what has actually happened in the coming days. All the information would be coming out, not just the ghee. The other ingredients used in the laddu were also of not of good quality. So just hang on for some time. Now all the facts would be coming out. No, but that's the point. The no, Mr. Ganpati, I'm afraid that's the point the judges asked. Where is the evidence? In the absence of evidence to make such a comment, when you ordered a probe, wait for it. You know, it seems that the anger with the Jagan Reddy is so high that the desire to push him down is so high that even without evidence, he goes out and makes the claim, which is what, which is what the judges ask again and again in courts, that we expect the gods to be kept away from politics. Where is the material evidence to conclude that animal fat has definitely been uh, used? And your advocates in the court are struggling to answer that question. That's not true, Rahul. I think uh, the same question what you are asking us is a question what has to, uh, it applies to the Supreme Court also. They are in a hurry. If the report comes out, there would have been a clarity. I don't know why they are like insisting so much, but let me tell you something very clear. This, those test reports were put out only because uh, it became a very sensitive issue and we wanted to come out with a detailed report. So kindly understand that, you know, it is a sensitive issue. So we could not uh, randomly come out and say this is what has happened or that is what has happened. And in that particular test report, it is 100% clear that there was serious adulteration where the parameter of 96 or 104 had to be. The parameter stood at only 20. So it is definitely contaminated and four vehicles were used and four vehicles were rejected. This is the naked truth. Just hang on for some time. All the facts are going to come out and, and the okay. people behind this would be also punished. Kishore Reddy, the TDP government says, let the full report come out. We know what we're talking about. Let the full report come out. The facts will be before the public domain. 
What do you make of what happened in court and what you're hearing from Mr. Ganpati? Yeah. So uh, from day one, that was, what, that was what we were trying to say. We were trying to say, you know, let's not bring God into politics and uh, uh, make a mess out of it. From day one, there have been uh, just a bunch of lies by the TVP party and its uh, personnel. Because, you know, uh, it, it is not a random kind of act where, you know, a chief minister of a state comes out uh, in front of the media, in front of uh, public and says, you know, uh, the ghee has been adulterated with animal fat, unless and until he had a substantial proof. But unfortunately here, just because, like you said, the, uh, the animosity towards Jagan Mohan Reddy Garu was so high that he made it all up. Because from day one, when the EO said, uh, when the reports came, and the EO first said that, you know, it was adulterated with... Uh, uh, seed oil, uh, seed oil, and one uh, something like one aspati and all. The second day, Chandrababu Naidugaru comes up in front of the media and says, you know, animal fat was used and pig meat, uh, pig fat was used in it. And then again, the EO comes and says, yes, uh, animal fat was used, but we haven't used it in laddus. And then, you know, there were a bunch of lies continuously uh, coming from the uh, uh, from their side. But from day one, we were very clear, you know, what is the hurry? When the report had come in July. Why did you wait till September to reveal it to the public? And, uh, you know, you were talking about uh, doing some prokshana, cleansing of the temple and all. I just wanted to understand, if at all something bad has happened, if at all something adulterated has happened, would the some prokshana take place in July or would it be taken, uh, you know, uh, just for the heck of it, would, be, would it be done in uh, October is what we wanted to understand. Because they, they knew from day one, you know, the key was not adulterated with uh, animal fat. But still, they came out, they claimed that it was uh, adulterated, and also they went to an extent saying one lakh laddus were sent to Ayodhya using animal fat. So they, they, these are kind of... No, but they say all this in the public, Raga Vavasti, but then struggle to justify this in court because the judges, you know, the judges, in fact, yes, go today, after when the senior... Court was asking, the court was today when Sorry, the court Ram, is asking about I would all be these grateful things, they, they, they I am the only one who is allowed to speak for a bit because I am the only lawyer on this panel. And secondly, I had the good fortune to be part of this hearing in as much as I was representing Mr. Vikram Sampath, who I'm, whom I have represented on earlier occasions, and Mr. Doshyan Sridhar, who is a religious scholar. So one thing we need to understand is this. It is that we have to make a distinction between oral observations and what is actually written in the order. Because all sorts of oral observations are made during the hearing. Unfortunately, there is this tendency that we conflate oral observations with whatever is there in the written order. Now, the written order is very simple. We had made this prayer that, is, that the Supreme Court, inter alia, we had made the prayer that the Supreme Court should monitor the investigation. Because it is very clear that there is something that might have gone seriously wrong. And what the Honorable Supreme Court has said is that it would like to elicit the opinion of Mr. Tushar Mehta, who is the Solicitor General of India, and who would, of course, be representing the views of the central government. This is what has happened. Now, there is, of course, a very good chance that after investigation uh, and hopefully, and it would be really desirable if it is monitored by a Supreme Court monitor, uh, appointed SIT, we were to come to the conclusion that there was indeed adulteration. And if we come to that conclusion, I think what we need to understand is this. Hindu temples do not belong to any government irrespective of which political party heads it. And I'm saying this with some responsibility because although I am... I am not a professional politician. I have served on two campaign committees with the BJP. But still, I will say so. No, all Hindu temples... Well, let's spend a moment, Raghav, on what happened in court. From what I can see of the court proceedings, senior advocate Siddharth Luthra, who was representing the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam Trust, uh, the judges say he wasn't answering questions. He asked a simple question on whether uh, the ghee was adulterated. And he says that there is nothing to show that the ghee that was used was adulterated and that they are awaiting the report of the committee that's been asked to probe this matter. In that case, do you think, accept... Let me, complete it. Yes. Let, me, let me say one thing, Rahul. Let, let me just respond to this very quickly. If I remember correctly, what fell from Justice uh, K.V. Vishwanathan, who was the puny judge on the bench, was that as of now, there is no proof that the samples that were found to be adulterated were indeed being used to prepare the laddu. So this is what fell from him. 
Now, in order to get an answer to this question, it is our opinion and it is our contention and stand before the Supreme Court that any that, that, that such investigation should be monitored by the SIT. So I think it is early to jump the gun. Yeah, yeah, but look at what you're saying. If you find Court some samples which are adulterated, you have no clue whether those samples were used in the preparation of the ghee or in the preparation of the laddus. You somehow reach the conclusion that their Tirupati laddus have uh, beef fat in them. Now, that's a very no, sensational charge for which there is no evidence. It can very well be that after investigation, which is why we are demanding the investigation, if all the facts were clear, then there would be no need to demand the investigation. Then we would be demanding punishment, uh, exemplary punishment against those who are responsible. No, which is why it's important to now, wait for the report, the which is why Mr. Ganpati, the judge says, let the report come out because you've got this, you know, it's, not, it's about Hindu belief as well. Now suddenly if people start thinking and people have come to the conclusion that the Tirupati laddus have animal fat in them and they're very upset about it. But as of now, the courts say again and again that there is no evidence to prove that the samples which were found adulterated were indeed the samples used for these Tirupati laddus. So you've got, you, there's so many leaps of faith in the charge that's being made, Mr. Ganpati. Uh, the statement which has been put out by the temple where eight trucks uh, uh, of uh, uh, he has been received by AR uh, daily from Tamil Nadu, outjumped previously, when the four were kind of pilgrims. So based on that, the other four were checked and they found that uh, it was a little <laughs> Okay, I'm having issues with that audio line. Till then, let me ask Ovi Ramana, who's been a member of the Tirupati Devasthanam board. Uh, Mr. Ramana, do you want to explain where you come out on this? Because you've been involved in the running of this board. This is a question not just to the Jagan Reddy government. It's a question to anybody who's been involved with the board. Because if any God-fearing Hindu is on that board and you find that animal fat is used in the preparation of laddu, this is to the shame of every person who's involved in that process. It's a very serious charge against the edifice and the manner in which this entire process is run. Yeah, good evening, uh, Mr. Rahul. And, uh, I'm not the... Uh, present a board member. I was the former board member of TGD. I was there in the board from 2006 to 2008. And uh, since the, this Prasadam Shishu is the case in the Apex court, I don't want to go into the details of the whatever you asked about the Ladu Prasadam Sandal. But certain things I can certainly tell you. See, Chandra Bhavanad is a strong devotee of Lord Venkateshara. Apart from that, he has got fear of the God. And you don't, uh, just like that, you don't uh, comment on anything on the prasadams and pilgrimage or temple any time in his entire span of 40 years, his political experience. And he will think twice, thrice, and he will meet a lot of the people and get only certain opinions, then only he will comment on that. And uh, I hope that certainly whatever the comments he has made, that it is not baseless comments, it is on the document that is evident and all. The document also, which has been certified by the National Dairy Development Board, which is a very prestigious uh, uh, analytical board in the country, number one. Number two, some uh, one of my, uh, this one participant was commenting about the politicalizing the issue of the Trimula Tripad Devasthana. Yes, it is true, it is a very good point to be discussed at uh, this moment. Rather, uh, discussing on the Ladu Prasanna, which is, uh, the matter was uh, at the Apex Court, in the process, in the progress of the Apex Court. See, last government, the YSRCP government, they made it a politicalized, very big issue. It has become national and international issue about the pink diamond. Pink diamond, they said that the pink diamond was stolen by Mr. Chandra Babu Nadu. It was there in the Chandra Babu Nadu's uh, puja room. If the CBS goes there, they can find out the uh, pink diamond and they can capture into that. My question to you, and even the, uh, uh, when the TDP constituted a board on this, they filed a suit, defamation suit also on uh, this one particular people who commented on this. So without knowing the fact or whether it is a genuine or whatever it is and all, because they were experts in propagating the always rumors and false allegations and all. Now, no, I, I, as a minister, I'm not gonna, I same Dharmanadi who was the... Let him speak, let him speak. Let Mr. Ramana conclude. 
No, please, 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 let me complete, let me complete. Same gentleman who was the general uh, executive officer till uh, last uh, three, four months away, Mr. Dharmaradi, he said there was no pink diamond at all. Whereas the chief priest of the Trimala Dharmaradi Devastam, Ramadeshulu, was there and his family, for decades together, he said that the pink diamond was there and it has been sold to Geneva. And he has been a PPT also in Chennai, in Delhi, and it has attracted many people in the country. When such is the case, when the YSRGP government has formed, and they constituted the board under the chairmanship of uh, Mr. Y.V. Subaradi. The first decision they took, they withdrew the case, defamation case. When they only raised the allegation saying that, no, that pink diamond was available, very well available in the puja room of the Chandra Bhavan Nadi, if the CBA goes, they can capture into that. And what made them to withdraw the, this one case against them? So it is clear understand that YSR which was meant for the only raising the allegations against Chandra Bhavan Nadi. And they, 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 they do not hesitate. They don't hesitate to even to take the God also into politics. They God also into the, uh, so using the, this one, their political advantage. Second thing, see, the, the, whatever the stamp duty they paid for filing the defamation suit, it has gone. Once they withdraw the petition, two crores, that is public money, that is pilgrim's money. They withdraw the case. Now two crores money, was, money has gone. This is one ridiculous, this one statement. That now these people are telling that Jagan Mohan yesterday was telling, who ever done the, this one mischief of the God, mischief of the this sentiments and all? Nobody is supposed to play with the sentiments of crores of the people. When the you people played the sentiments of the people, he said that Chandra Babu should be apprehended. Then now you tell me who has to be apprehended. Second thing I will tell you. No, well, once again, let me, let me hold you there Bhuman and Karnas ask Mr. Reddy, Reddy this question, Mr. Reddy. Now, here's the point. When you, the, this is the vicious nature no, of me, Andhra politics. Well, I'm coming talk. back to you. Let, let's not go too far ahead of ourselves. When you were in power, you one. tried to do the same to Chandra Babu Naidu. Now he's paying back in the same currency. No, there's a difference, Rahul. Here, it is not Jagan Mohan Reddy Garu who has IQ. It was the Raman, it was a priest of the Tirmala Tirpati Devasthanam who had uh, asked for it. So there's a difference. Here, the chief minister himself comes out in the open and says, you know, the past government under the regime of Jagan Mohan Reddy Garu has done it. What does no, Jagan Mohan Reddy Garu do, has Vijay to do with uh, something that Raman Adik has Vijay also Vijay said? Mr. Vijay Sarreddy, MP, who made Any the Any individual, see, you, you, are, you like an individual are claiming to, you know, of your MP. when you have uh, your opinion, there are people who are bound to have opinions. And also, this is what we are trying to say, you know, let's stop playing politics with God. Let us not... Do, do this anymore. You know, the Thirmala Tirpati Devasthanam is a very sacred place and it is a sacred uh, institution for you, for us, and also not just for TDP and YCP. It's a, in, a sacred place for lakhs of devotees of India. Why are you stooping to this level and, you know, trying to... No, but to, that's a question uh, that Deepak Reddy Ganpati you know, needs to answer. Matter. You know, would it not have been wiser in hindsight to wait for the report to come out, to have the full SIT report, to know whether the adulterated samples were used in the making of the prasadam and then to go public. This desire of wanting to pin or trip Jagan Reddy down once and forever was so strong that, you know, it seems to have got the better of you. Rahul, let me be very clear. The first thing is, they said there was, uh, the adulterated ghee was not used. So I've clearly shown you a statement which said that four tankers were used. The second letter which I showed you was the expert committee which was formed actually got into the uh, got into the bottom of the issue so we are in government that's our responsibility to take uh, take care of the res uh, of the sentiments of the hindus so now we are not going to fall into the political trap of this ycp guys just hang on for some time all facts would come out. now the detailed investigation is going on and most of the people who are who are uh, uh, who are, who are culprits in this are going to go to jail. Okay. So I, I don't want to, you know. I, I've clearly shown you that we did not want to. We did not want to blow it up. We have taken action. We put an expert committee and we corrected the problem immediately so that that mistake doesn't happen. And then the other issues are being taken up because it is a sensitive issue. Let me assure you that it was done in best faith. Okay, I'm out of time. Reverse engineering. This is uh, unfortunate, they're in they're fact, because you wait for the report to come out. This is a very serious charge. It is not just to do with Tirupati. It raises questions about all kinds of laddus made in temples all over the country. And therefore, if you level a charge of that nature, you must have the evidence to back it. To go level this charge and uh, you know fly a kite, as it were, just because it's a politically expedient kite, is a very 
dangerous thing to do. Wait for the report, see that you are sure, only then would a public functionary, including someone as senior and seasoned as Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu, go out and make this charge. In the court, it was quite embarrassing today to see that uh, advocates of the Tirupati Devasthanam board quite at odds with what was being said by the Andhra Pradesh government, saying that they didn't have any evidence for this. So that just uh, vitiates the whole uh, proceeding, makes things very awkward because you then don't know who to believe. And if you can't believe people in power, then it really raises questions about the way uh, comments are made in the absence of evidence because it is politically suitable at that time to target your opponent. Terribly, terribly unfortunate this. Let's see what the report ultimately shows. That's what we're now waiting to see. We've got word coming in that Prime Minister Modi has spoken to the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. Prime Minister has put out a post on X saying that he spoke to Prime Minister Netanyahu about recent developments in West Asia. He says terrorism has no place in our world. It is crucial to prevent regional escalation and to ensure the safe release of all hostages. India is committed to supporting efforts for an early restoration of peace and stability. Go across to Gaurav Savant who joins us, uh, Prime Minister Modi, at this time speaking to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, also in the United Nations, India not joining a lot of countries including Japan in, uh, oppose, in, in demanding that there be a ceasefire and opposing Israel's actions, India very clearly indicating which side of this uh, divide it's on, Gaurav. Rahul, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, once the Prime Minister had a conversation with uh, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, you know, India has a principal stance on this. India wants peace in the region. India is in favor of a two-state solution which live in peace and harmony with each other without threatening each other. So that's the point, uh, you know, India has been stressing on at, at each time. But India is also opposed to terror. India itself is a victim, uh, you know, of Pakistan state-sponsored radical Islamist terror uh, where, incidentally, you'd recall in 2611, Israelis and Americans had also lost their lives uh, during 2611 that you and I had covered. So very clearly, India has a principled stance India is in touch uh, with Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of uh, Israel and Prime Minister Narendra Modi also had a conversation with, uh, the, the, with the President of Palestine. He also had a conversation with the leadership uh, of Lebanon. Uh, India has constantly been in touch with all sides, uh, you know, saying whatever assistance India can provide for a peaceful solution. India is willing to go the whole, uh, you know, hog on that and pro help in whatever way Indian assistance may be required, Rahul. Avan, thank you very much for joining us. I want to introduce uh, my colleague Ashraf Wani who's been reporting from Lebanon. Uh, in fact, India Today is the only channel reporting from Ground Zero in Lebanon. Uh, Israeli airstrikes continue to hit southern Lebanon. Ashraf has been in the middle of all that action. Uh, Israel finds itself uh, constantly having to deal with the reality of some kind of missile fire coming in from different parts of Hezbollah-controlled territory and also from Yemen, from Houthi-controlled territory. Uh, Israeli airstrikes continue to hit southern Lebanon. Our correspondent Ashraf Wani was in Beirut. Uh, and as Israeli hits, airstrikes came within a short distance of where uh, Ashraf was. Let me take you through this ground report and I'll just go across live to Ashraf in a moment from now. The assassination of Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah in an Israeli airstrike has plunged West Asia into deeper turmoil. India Today's Ashraf Wani, who's in the war zone in southern Lebanon, visited the site targeted by Israeli missiles over the last few days. A multi-story building has been uh, targeted a few hours back early in the morning on Monday and this multi-story building has collapsed completely and you can see nothing except destruction here. At least one hit. This is strike, one of the biggest strikes carried out by the design in Lebanon since last one week after the Hassan Nasrullah's uh, death in the south suburbs of the Bin. The ongoing war has caused immense suffering to civilians on the ground. 
trial on the Sunday evening targeted this building behind me here in the center of Beirut. Uh, three people died, uh, we believe it to be the, uh, to be the political uh, leaders, some uh, top political leaders of uh, Hezbollah had been targeted in this building behind me. You can see everything is shattered here, how many cars had got damaged. Uh, there is the presence of army and the security personnel, in fact, police and how much devastating that uh, blast had been in that multi-story building behind me, which has completely damaged it and uh, has uh, caused a lot of damage in that particular uh, apartment. Despite growing international calls for a ceasefire, both sides continued their attacks relentlessly. <laughs> With hundreds crossing the border to Syria, looking for a safe zone, the streets in these areas have turned empty. Most of the people have fled from these areas and are now moving towards the safer areas and thousands of people and families spend their nights in open sky in different roadsides, parks and the sea beaches here in the Beirut. Indications are so that after the final position and funeral of Hassan Nasrullah, this war will escalate. Hezbollah has not yet decided the day for the funeral of Hassan Nasrullah, but the Lebanese government has already declared five days of mourning, which will close on Wednesday. Ashrafani, find India today in Beirut. I want to go across live to Beirut, where my colleague Ashraf Wani is standing by. Ashraf, you've been reporting to southern Lebanon, you've traveled the country. Give our viewers a sense of what you've seen on the ground and what you expect will happen from here. Actually, one of the interesting moments what I came to learn, Rahul, was uh, when I interacted with one of the senior most doctors of Lebanon. Uh, he's 70 years old and he has almost all seen all the conflicts in Lebanon, particularly with Israel. He was saying that something unusual they have seen in these uh, attacks which are being carried out by the Israel uh, from last one week, particularly one uh, that hit the Hezbollah headquarters here in the southern suburb of uh, uh, Beirut city. Uh, he said the uh, uh, bomb which was used by the IDF uh, could penetrate 15 stories of a building and uh, that gives some kind of a sense that what kind of weaponry is being used in this war. Uh, I have almost witnessed and I was in the periphery of three of the major strikes which were carried out in the Beirut, including that of uh, Hezbollah headquarters. Uh, and there is a, it is a, just a time of seconds when a missile comes lower this area and it penetrates into a building and brought it to the ground zero. That is something which is irritating not only the Hezbollah, but also the Iran, that this kind of weaponry is very dangerous. They could, cannot counter it. But the other tactics which are being used uh, uh, by the Hezbollah against Israel, they are being uh, used still and uh, they, are, they may be intensified in the coming days too, to take some kind of revenge from Israel okay. by Hezbollah. Uh, Israel is currently fighting wars on three out of five fronts. It's stepped up offensive against the three H's, Hamas in the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Houthis in Yemen. In a rare move, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed Iranians, telling them that their nation will be free soon. This even uh, as Israel continues to pound Lebanon and is preparing for a full-blown ground offensive. Hezbollah has meanwhile vowed to fight back. Ashrafani with this report. This is what remains of southern Lebanon's Ain Eddel. Israeli army says it has killed another senior Hezbollah figure, Nabil Kau, amid an ongoing exchange of strikes between the two sides. This even as Israeli military tanks continue to mass big in northern Israel-Lebanon border. Israel has expanded its attacks on Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Houthis in Yemen, stoking fears of a bigger regional war. The Israel Air Force's refueling aircraft have been operating in all arenas in the war, 
providing fighter jets with flexibility in strikes and aerial operations at any distance. The Israeli Air Force is conducting strikes on military targets belonging to the Houthi terrorist regime in the areas of Rasisa and Hudaya in Yemen, including power plants and a seaport that are used by the Houthis to import oil for military purposes. We see the attack today, 2,000 kilometers away in Hodeida and its surroundings, and the achievements, as they are reflected, are very impressive. And the meaning is clear. Those who try to attack us or harm the citizens of Israel will pay a very heavy price. In Gaza, too, Israel continues its offensive against Hamas. A new video released by Israeli army shows a tunnel in central Gaza Strip being dismantled. Israel is fighting wars on three of its five fronts. All the three fronts with the three H's. Hezbollah in Lebanon, Hamas in the Gaza Strip and the Houthis in Yemen are active and blazing. The opening of multiple fronts comes ahead of the first anniversary of the October 7 attack on Israel by Hamas. At the heart of the war is Iran, which provides significant financial, military and strategic support to Hamas, Hezbollah and Houthis and the Iraqi and Syrian Shia militias against their common enemy, Israel. Israel's military actions in the war are therefore in part aimed at weakening Iran's regional influence by disrupting its ability to support these proxy groups. The killing of high-ranking leaders of Hezbollah and the targeting of Houthi rebels in Yemen are seen as direct challenges to Iran's regional strategy. Iran's response to these developments will be crucial in determining the future trajectory of the war. Bureau Report, India Today. The aftershocks of Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah's death are being felt in India, specifically in Jammu and Kashmir, Srinagar city and adjoining areas, particularly Shia localities in the valley, saw widespread protests against the killing of the Hezbollah chief. Slogans and banners denouncing Israel and the United States were seen on the streets of Kashmir. PDP leader Iltija Mufti stirred a controversy by mourning Nasrallah's death and comparing Kashmir to Gaza. <laughs> Protests erupt in various areas of Srinagar and Bhutan districts in Jammu and Kashmir over the killing of Hassan Nasrullah. Demonstrators took to the streets on Monday, chanting anti-Israel and anti-American slogans, holding images of the Hezbollah chief who died in an airstrike in Lebanon on September 27. The Bajrang Dal held counter-protests against the PDP and NC in Jammu, slamming them for backing Nasrullah. Political tensions escalated after PDP chief Mehbooba Mufti cancelled her campaign in solidarity with the people of Palestine and Lebanon over the killing of Nasrullah in Israel. Mufti's daughter Iltija lauded Nasrullah for backing the people of Gaza, calling the Hezbollah chief Sahab Iltija Mufti stated that she, just like Nasrallah, is against Israel's policy. But our hearts are heavy. Our heart is very hard. You know that Nasrallah Sahib has been in the past, and in Gaza, he has been fighting for the people who are not from there. He wasn't even from there. So our hearts are heavy, and people here should have the right to protest. If they are protesting, what is the problem? They want to protest against the Israeli policy of genocide, and they want to protest against the Israeli policy. They want to protest against the Israeli policy of genocide. How are they going to go there in Lebanon and carpet bombing? There is no wrong thing. The JNK National Conference also expressed solidarity with Nasrallah. What happened yesterday, it seems like the whole country is looking at the whole country. The government of the Hindus, the government of the Hindus, the government of the Hindus, باقی ملکوں کے لیڈران کو اسرائیل پہ دباؤ بنائے رکھ کے وہاں دوبارہ امن قائم کرنے کی مکمل کوشش کرنی چاہیے The Congress chose to distance itself from the controversy 
हम बाहर जो देख रहे हैं वो एक अलग जो दुनिया का नज़रिया है जहाँ जो जो जिसकी फीलिंग है लेकिन एट द सेम टाइम हमें अपनी डेमोक्रेसी को स्ट्रेंथन करके अपने लोगों के लिए आगे बढ़ने की ज़रूरत है मेरा ख्याल है ऐसी सिचुएशन जो है वो क्रिएट नहीं करनी चाहिए The BJP questioned the intent of the NCN PDP in rallying behind his bola. अगर दुनिया भर में कहीं आतंकवाद के खिलाफ कार्रवाई होती है, तो National Conference PDP और Congress जैसे पार्टियां उनके समर्थन में नजर आती हैं। उनको गाजा तो नजर आता है, लेकिन ढाका में हिंदुओं की हत्याएं नजर नहीं आती। ये राजनीतिक दल तुष्टिकरण की राजनीति के चलते चलते इस तरह से अपनी रैलियों को रद्द भी करते हैं आतंकवाद का समर्थन भी करते हैं ये लोकतंत्र के पक्ष में नहीं है आतंकवाद के समर्थक हैं कश्मीरी पंडित ज्वाइन द कोर स्लैमिंग मुफ्ती इनको कम से कम शर्म आनी चाहिए जो नब्बे में उन्होंने नरसंहार किया है जो गिरजा टिकू का कत्ल आम किया उस तक इन्होंने मुंह तक नहीं खोला उन्होंने उन्होंने जो बांग्लादेश में नरसंहार हिंदू के साथ हो उस वक्त इन्होंने मुंह नहीं खोला है मेरी एक रिक्वेस्ट है गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया से ऐसे लोगों को चुन के इनको एयरपोर्ट तक पहुँचाइए जहाज में बिठाइए फ्री हम उसका पैसा देंगे उनको वहाँ पोर्ट कर लीजिए The protest by the NC and PDP over Nasrullah's killing come a day ahead of the last phase of voting in JNK. Bureau Report, India Today. The protests in Kashmir come a day before the Union Territory votes in the last and final phase tomorrow. 40 constituencies of Jammu and Kashmir will vote to decide the fate of 415 candidates. 24 of these seats fall in the Jammu region and 16 in Kashmir. Most of the constituencies are located along the line of control. Mir Farid with this ground report. Jammu and Kashmir prepares to vote in the final phase on 1st October. Campaigning for the high stakes third and final phase ended on Sunday. There's going to be a keen contest among the NC, PDP and Awami Ittehad party in the valley and a do or die battle between the BJP and Congress in Jammu division. Security has been beefed up for polling to be held in 40 of the total 90 seats in the seven districts. Kupwara, Baramula, Bandipura, Udhampur, Samba, Kathua and Jammu. Polling is the time we are coming here. We are taking the machines. 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 We are taking the medical ambulances. We are taking the medical ambulances. We are taking the emergency ambulances. If anything happens, we will get a quick response. We are taking the polling station. We are taking the polling station. We are taking the polling station. Nomads of Bhaderwa moved towards Bani in Kathua to participate in the final phase voting. So, in this voting, we have a great opportunity to vote for the vote. So, we have to vote for 15-20 days, but because of the vote, we have to vote for the vote. 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 कारोबार आपने करता रहे। वोट को आपने को समझा नहीं था कोई कोई नाम नहीं था इसको कोई वेलियो या कोई उसकी सामी थी आपने। मैं तमाम बुजुर्गों से, नौजवान साथियों से गुजारिश करता हूँ कि कल। But the most critical part of this phase of election is going to be in constituencies located along the line of control. In Bandipura, people want change. Famous for the boycott wave, this region wants to script its future. This time. Through vote. Bahatar Sal say NC ne hame dasa hai, ragda hai. Yahan kuch nahi ki NC ne kya kiya, Congress ne kya kiya. Ab BJP aayi, BJP ne usse batar kiya yahan. Bhot beerusgar hai yahan pe. Kashmir me itna sakti hai. Kashmir me dukan to dukan bhi bhot sakti hai. Matlab kam bhi nahi chalta hai aaj. Jawan ko aise hi utha lete hai. Kahin pe bhi aaj. Dekho idhar koi bhi log aaram se bol nahi sakte. Takriban mujhe 35 FIR hai. Kisne lagaye? Kyu lagaye? हम बहुत ही बोलता है यहाँ अमन है क्या अमन है जरा मुझे बताओ उसने वादा किया था स्टेट का दिया अब तक उसका यही रीजन है कि बीजेपी ने काफी सारे ऐसे काले कानून 
कश्मीर के ऊपर ठोक दिए हैं हजारों लाखों जॉब का पेंडिंग है एक भी नोटिफिकेशन नहीं निकलता निकलता है कैंसिल होता है इनका ही कोई ताई चाचा आ जाता पीछे से सिगरेट निकाल देता है ड्रेने है रोड है और जो जो ऊपर ऊपर रहते हैं बंदे उनको भी रोड होना चाहिए कश्मीर के जो यहाँ यहाँ के जो लोकल रिसोर्स है टूरिज्म है फर्नीचर है वट एवर जा रहा है कश्मीरी को एक इतना टुकड़ा भी नहीं हाथ लगाने देते कहा जाता वो फर्नीचर मैं आज तक बाइकआउट कर रहा था हमारी पूरी फैमिली बाइकआउट करती थी इलेक्शन की लेकिन पहली बार हमें उम्मीद की किरण दिखी है इंजीनियर रशीद में हम सब मिलकर उनको वोट करेंगे पीपल आर पोलिटिकली वेरी अवेयर दे नो फ्री With Mir Farid, Bureau Report, India Today. The interesting thing is, even in parts of Kashmir where the only talk earlier was of a boycott, they're talking about coming out to vote. Whoever they vote for, whatever they like, they dislike. That's up to them. But at least they want to be a part of the democratic process, and they want to ensure that their voice is heard through the ballot box. That's a big change, and a step forward. Uh, meanwhile the state of war in haryana is also hotting up with four days in the campaign left rahul gandhi set off on a vijay sankalp yatra along with his sister priyanka gandhi vadra the congress is hoping that rahul's yatra will generate the same kind of enthusiasm that the bharat jodo yatra did the bjp on the other hand is making lots of tactical maneuvers to ensure that their vote bank stays as much intact as possible and that their seat share doesn't come down take a look The Gandhis enter the Haryana Dangal. Rahul and Priyanka kicked off their Vijay Sankalp Yatra on Monday with the rally in Narayanagar constituency in Ambala. The Congress leaders hit out at the Narendra Modi government on a range of topics, including Agni Veer, which has become one of the top issues. ये Agni Veer scheme नहीं है, ये गलत फैमी में मत रहिए, ये जवानों की पेंशन चोरी करने का तरीका है. जो नॉर्मल जवान होता है उसे पेंशन दी जाएगी पूरी जिंदगी उसे पेंशन दी जाएगी जिसको अग्निवीर नाम दिया है उसे पेंशन नहीं मिलेगी मतलब अग्निवीर से उसके जेब से पैसा छीना गया है कहा गया अदानी जी के जेब में राहुल यूज द रैली टू डिसमिस रिपोर्ट ऑफ डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन फॉर्मर चीफ मिनिस्टर भूपेंद्र सिंह हुडा एंड पार्टी दलित फेस Kumari Shelja with a show of unity. Congress party, बिल्कुल जमीन से काम कर रही है सभी लोग मिलकर काम कर रहे हैं और सरकार कांग्रेस पार्टी की बनाएंगे इसमें कोई शक नहीं BJP in power for 10 years is banking on Prime Minister Modi. जो पार्टी अपने नेताओं के बीच एकता नहीं ला सकती वो राज्य में स्थिरता कैसे लाएगी आप देख रहे हैं कि कैसे यहां कांग्रेस में मुख्यमंत्री बनने के लिए मारा मारी मची है बापू भी दावेदार है और बेटा भी दावेदार है और दोनों मिलकर बाकियों को निपटा लेवे लगे हैं और ये सब देख करके हरियाणा के जागरूक नागरिक कांग्रेस को निपटाने में लग पड़े हैं द कांग्रेस इज मेलिंग अ चांस इन हरियाणा वेर इट हेज बीन आउट ऑफ पावर फॉर अ डेकेड द पार्टी इज होपिंग टू कैश इन ऑन द एंगर अमंग फार्मर्स एंड रूरल पॉपुलेशन टू डिस लॉज द नयाब सिंह सैनी गवर्नमेंट बीजेपी को यहाँ पे हराओ धन्यवाद जय हिंद नमस्कार ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे fascinating battle here it will set the tone for what follows maharashtra is the big one but haryana is the first battle after the lok sabha election so very very consequential looking forward to our coverage of results day this is where i wrap up the news track tonight i look forward to seeing you at pm tomorrow evening till then from all of us here goodbye